Hey, this is Nikki Sarah with Chris Markley, and we're talking to you today to refresh on what's going on with the Ascent Seed Sack, which happened in Cortland. How many years has that been going on? Uh, this last year was the fifth. Wow. So. And that's actually a fundraiser to uh, get money for the Cortland Music Department? It's part of it. I mean, it's, it's really operated... Um, with, I mean, a number of different, like the main goal is to promote local music and have a music festival. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the benefits of it on the side, uh, is, okay. you know, part, part of, um, you know, proceeds from the day go to the youth center music program. Uh, thanks entirely, uh, to our friend Rosie Rosenthal. Um, he does a number of things, uh, throughout the year. Like he's had this, uh, Phil Clark benefit, um, an annual concert that raises money for the same program. Um, so he's very active with that, and it started just with him asking if if he could take our deposits for the cans <laughs> from the festival because they pile up and they amount yeah, to. Yeah, nice. Uh, so it goes towards like um, instruments and music lessons for the kids, which is just I mean it's just a part of it really. It's not like a, yeah. uh, the mission statement or anything. It's just like one of those fringe benefits okay. for the festival. Okay. So this has been a, a big year for you, just in general. I mean, you, I like to think they all are. Yeah, yeah. but 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 you you. Did a lot of stuff this year. Yeah, and uh, the, I mean, you built that that traveling studio the behemoth, thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so why don't you start by just like going through some of the highlights? Yeah, no, that was definitely a big year um, in regard to the um, my project, the the after school special. It's a bus conversion. Um, I've been working on it for a long time actually, but this was yeah, this past year was actually. Um, it marked the first time I brought it out and put it to use and some of the ways that I've wanted to apply it um, to my music career and just like the music scene in general. But um, <coughs> in June, I did my first event with it actually at a, at a school in Dryden. We did a, pre a presentation for first and second graders, which was, it was an amazing experiment. So it was like, I've been a little out of touch with the, like the six and seven year old crowd for a while and they just blew me away um with their energy and knowledge really um and talking about music and sustainability and environmental design and concepts like that i mean the second graders were on point with everything i asked them and the first graders too um but just really really amazing experience it was myself and nate marshall from nate and kate um nate's also a very talented juggler so I brought him in for part of the presentation and we worked that. And so we brought the bus to Dryden Elementary and did a presentation to the kids. So that was like the first time I brought it out for um, what I want to do more of <coughs> in, in the educational sense. And mm -hmm. then later in the summer uh, at Cortland Summer Stage, uh, we used it to host the, the North Stage at that event. So it was really the two applications that I'd like to do more of in the future, but last year was the first time uh, we debuted those, so it was exciting. Sure. So describe the process that went into into creating this thing. The bus. Well, well, yeah. I mean, well, first of all, what was your what was your motivation? I mean, you know, where where you you obviously had those at least those two ideas in mind. Sure. Right. It's 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 been a work in progress, really, as as far as like what I plan to do with it. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the the inception was when I was living in Brooklyn. Um, and, and playing with the crooners, we, myself and, and my bandmate um, and some friends moved into a loft in Brooklyn. And it was like that scene like Williamsburg and then beyond Williamsburg where a lot of artists are like moving into factories and building um, creative spaces, you know, I mean apartments basically. But um, it was like the idea of transforming that space. We, we built a studio. We built actually built all the rooms in there. Um, and just customized it for what we wanted to do and we had like a vocal booth and so it's like the idea of customizing spaces and then me realizing that it would be great to have a mobile you know version of that and so i started to get the thought of well you know a bus really wasn't even that much smaller than our apartment there <laughs> and i could fit all these things in and um so the idea really started then um in in new york city and then uh really for me to do that i i I moved back upstate um, just to have the space and the facilities to work on it because I grew up around here and I just feel like, you know, a bit a bit more plugged into where I can function and I mean, you can't build a bus in New York City, really. So um, it was part of that, you know, for other reasons too, but um, so initially it was just to have like a mobile like command center just to facilitate the music career, uh, either for travel to have comfort 
um, and like recording or practice facilities on the road, you know, to like to, to combine that into a mobile um, vehicle, but also I had a lot of interest in sustainability. So that was all tied into, to just, you know, just to want to do something that was progressive in the sense of having, you know, the low carbon footprint. So run off vegetable oil, you know, power things by solar, um, solar heating, solar electricity, and just try to tie a lot of my interests into one thing that I felt like could serve a lot of different aspects of, of my music or just my life in general. So that's how it started. And obviously I wanted to have an application for it beyond just like having a bus. Um, so it evolved into the idea that I could use it for live shows, but also with an educational side as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, the, the, it's, it's, and it's still evolving. Like I still, sure. I, and it, it's funny when people ask me what I'm going to use it for. I, I really don't, I honestly don't have a, a clear cut answer. I've got ideas and I've got things. I just know that it, I knew it was worth it for me to do, mm -hmm. uh, just for myself, the experience of building it. But also just for knowing that it, it would serve a greater purpose. If you build it, it will find you. Yeah, I, <laughs> exactly. I like pe my best answer is like, what like, what do you want to do with the bus? I'm like, whatever the bus wants to do. Right. You know, it, sure. I mean, it's, it sounds ridiculous, but it's true. Yeah. Um, I, I figure it's going to give me the best reason. So. so, you took it to Dryden Elementary, I guess, mm -hmm. right? And. Um, it was both for the purpose of spreading music, but was the, or was this specifically the sustainability aspect of it? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it was both. It's, it right. was split. Honestly, we uh -huh. did um, we did the presentation half and half, uh, and talking about it was just to group it together, I guess, and, and try to offer something that might be inspiring sure. to the kids to say, hey, you can you know you can really do whatever you want to do, uh, and then you know I joke about like it's been taking me a long time to do this but um it's worth it so i'm continuing to do it and i didn't know how to do it but i'm teaching myself along the way like just to kind of inspire the thought that you can do whatever you want to do but then also try to offer what i think are are, are good uh things to lead by example with kids like there's a smart way to do it that's considerate of some things just as far as resources are concerned i think you know just to it's important for me to feel like i'm establishing a foundation that operates from those principles so i try to um, try not to preach, you know, and say any, you know, like one way, but just to say, Hey, this is one way to do it. And, and to me, it makes sense because mm -hmm. you guys are, you guys are cooking your chicken nuggets in the cafeteria. I can take that oil and I can drive many miles, right. you know, like mm -hmm. on, on that fuel, or we've got sunshine yeah. uh, that's going to continue to shine. And I, I could, you, you know, use fossil fuels to heat my water, but I could also just use the sun that's shining. And, and that was the part where it really amazed me how much the kids knew. It's like, I'd hold up a black hose and ask them like, what do you think I could use this for on the bus? And every single question I asked, like, the, the, like these kids were just like, you can use, and it wasn't even just so far as like the simple basic concept of heating the water, but like the girl I called on for that was like, you can use that for, you know, like your hot water pressure or something like, and it was just like <laughs> taking it beyond, I'm like, and I thought, you know, I thought for sure maybe they had been coached before the presentation, right. just, you know, but like it really, honestly, just these kids are soaking up, I think, a lot of credit to their parents and their teachers and just uh -huh. the environment and the climate of things that, you know, I think well, is I happening. Well, I guess if you have another project, I mean, your subcontractors might be a little bit younger than you think next time. Right, yeah, no, it's, <laughs> I'm saying <laughs> the roadies of the future, yeah, right, really, sure. it's, it's, it's completely selfish. So the, the music mentoring that you do I mean I see you leading by example yeah I, I'd like right. to let people I mean, make whatever they want to of sure it. Like, um, it's just as much for me as I'd like it to be for other people right um, it's 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 just trying to fill it's like you guys I think filling what you see as a uh, an opportunity in promoting the scene around here just as much as I see there's opportunities to do more with it sure um, and I think it's, it's based on, you know, just the feedback that I get, or like the mm -hmm. things that I hear from people. And it's like, it having grown up in this area, you know, it's like, I think it's probably a shortcoming of a lot of small towns. It's like the perception that there's nothing to do. Um, and it's not all about that, but it's like, well, if, yeah, if you don't provide yourself with things to do and other people don't provide you with things to do, then yeah, there's nothing to do. Mm -hmm. But I like, you know, I, I think about that. It's like, well, I, I want more music events. So like, I'm not going to wait, like there are some great events around here, but maybe they weren't necessarily the type of events that I wanted to have around here. So 
the way to get that is to create them. Uh, and so it's, it's not, you know, it's, it's not complicated. Like the, the reasons for doing it are pretty simple and it's just, so we have them, um, just as much for myself as it is for other people. But I think it's to see like what can happen at a community level is amazing. And, and just to see like there's with, with those efforts comes the reward pretty quickly. And I've learned a lot, you know, in just the past two years of trying to do stuff with Cortland Stages about what it is to do an event publicly in a city, on city property. That was the first time I had experienced that, and I, I had a crash course in city government, and I learned how things work, and I, I learned who you have to talk to, and, you know, the considerations for that. And it was challenging, but it wasn't, you know, certainly it was worth going through that to, to Nobody bit your head off. Not, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> it's still here. Uh... <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, it was it was challenging. I mean, I like you know you run into challenges. I think, and it's I think it's important to just try to like navigate it with as many you know being considerate of everybody's position on it. Like everybody's coming at it from a different point of view. Whether it's the local business people, whether it's the music fans, or it's the local government, everybody has a job to do and they have interest. In it. Like you can't please everybody, but hopefully those who aren't pleased will come around and see that there's less reasons to be opposed to something like that than there are reasons to be um, against it. But yeah, I mean, and it's not to like blow that out of proportion because it's, you know, it's, it's certainly been a rewarding process, like learning those things. I, I, I feel a lot more enlightened about how things work, you know, mm -hmm. the community level, like, which is just like one of those, you know, fringe benefits to, to doing something like this. You like, I learned things that I didn't realize I'd learn. Sure. So, um, yeah, it's, it's just, trying to do my part to contribute to something that I want to see grow. And I think that has great potential. I think there's an amazing music scene around here. So like we should exploit it in the best way possible, like exploit as a, you know, in, in a, as a positive, you know, term, I think there's, we can do more to exploit it in, in the best way. Mm -hmm. um, maybe there's better words, but just as far as utilizing it, I guess, and um, putting some more organization to it, I guess. So, what were the highlights of the year for you? Um, those events certainly were. Um, it's been great seeing them grow. I think that was one of the biggest things. Just is like, it's, you know, seed stock has just been consistently growing every year, um, and we learn more about what it goes to, you know, what goes into trying to create a a smooth experience. The, you know, it's like we realize, you know, there's a, you do more work on the front end to make it seem like it's, you know, easy mm -hmm. um, when it actually happens and not, you know, it's like do a lot of running around the first few years and not looking like we've got it under control because we didn't, you know, but, um, but it's all an experiment, you know, and the same with Cortland Summer Stage. This was the second year we did that. So it was like the first year was really my crash course in local government and, you know, doing something, doing a public event on in the middle of Main Street and closing down streets and things like that. Like, I, like I didn't make a huge deal out of it, but it's a big deal. You know, like it, it just it's disruptive in many ways. Um, so you deal with what that is, and then you get beyond that to the point where then you can focus on the event. And you know, maybe we had a few hundred people the first year, and then last year around a thousand people. You know, for summer stage and went from one stage to three stages, five bands to 10 bands. You know, it's just like seeing these things grow is really exciting. And it's what propels me to keep sure. wanting to put effort into it because yeah. it's reaffirming that people want it. Uh, so that's exciting. Um, the work with Freeman Music, we talked about a little bit um, earlier. That's been really exciting. Um, a whole different application for music and creativity just to be um, talking to television networks to, about creating music custom to their needs um, is, a, is something that I've just been starting to get into more and I'm excited about this year really where that's going to go. Um, so let's talk about this year. So what's yeah. what's up for Chris Markley? Um, really the focus has you know, been less on live performance this winter and more on Freeman Music mm -hmm. um, and reaching out to um, TV networks and the people that work there that have the challenge of matching sound to visual and the magic that can happen when that works well and wanting to be a part of that process. That's, that's exciting. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what projects 
uh, we have for that. And then just a continuation of things <coughs> from these past couple of years, you know, Seed Stock 6, uh, Cortland Summer Stage 3, um, and just other shows and festivals like last year Digger Jones played uh, Peach Fest, the Elman Brothers Festival down in Scranton. And that was really exciting to be something, be a part of something that I didn't have, you know, like didn't organize and that mm -hmm. was next, you know, like the next level of, you know, really getting alongside some of the biggest names and like biggest names in music in my world and people that I idolized, you know, growing up um, as far as like the role models and to be a part of something that, you know, was alongside them was exciting. So, do, you know, being a part of more festivals like that um, is the goal. And yeah, just I, I think the continuation of everything that we've been working on, you know, more more events with the bus. Um, there's still work to do on it. It's it's looking more complete, but um, really like looking forward to wrapping that up and applying it more and doing more events. I've got a actually an event coming up in March. Uh, it's called Jumpstart uh, 10. It's a youth conference in Cortland County where they had all the 10th graders in Cortland County to SUNY Cortland, and they hold different workshops and talks. Um, really, I think just about like inspiring different things. And so I'm going to give some presentations uh, to them on the bus. So I know I, it's like I'm trying to like rework the presentation from, you know, the first and second grade level, which obviously is completely different. I'm like these are these are young adults with very much different needs as far as like how yeah. things are communicated. Um, They're on the verge of having to make some real decisions. Well, yeah, you know, it's like I, like I, like obviously like I want to make sure that I'm on my toes with the first and second graders, and they kept me on my toes. But like I feel like the tenth graders are going to do that even you know so uh -huh. much more. Yeah. Um, so so that's exciting. I'm looking forward to that and, and doing more events like that. Um, different age groups, you know, with the bus, and mm -hmm. so you've got like the public uh, concert application, but then also like the academic and the different grade levels, and gearing that presentation to the kids and explaining things just really the same concepts, just saying it in a different way um, so that you can relate those ideas. I, like, I like that like aspect of the bus too, just trying to figure out how to communicate sure. these ideas at a, you know, different age levels. Well, when things warm up, maybe you'll give us a tour. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we can get, it's, it's across the street, we could go yeah, there. Probably. We'll, we'll walk through some snow to get to it. Wait, but. wait, wait until it, it yeah, thaws. <laughs> absolutely. I'd, I'd love to give you guys a that tour. That would be great. Well, Chris, Appreciate it again. Thank you very much for giving us your time and welcoming us into your home. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate it. Come back anytime.